Good morning. Where to begin? There is so much happening today. Uh, the last conference I uh, presented at was in the middle of the crash. Everyone had these dour expressions. Some had panicked expressions. Um, everybody's smiling here today. We're at the very beginning of a new age of civilization, human communication, and human understanding. I'm 72 years old, and I have seen a lot in my 72 years. I saw the creation of the computer, the advances in software, the internet, everything that we have today in terms of making life easier, our smartphones, laptops, pads. And with everything comes a black and a white, an up and a down, a positive and a negative. The smartphones. Everybody here has one. By the way, does anyone not own a smartphone? Let me see your hand. No. Now, five years ago, there were a few people. No, I'm not doing it. This smartphone has given more utility and power to your lives than any device that I have seen developed. And at the same time, as I am speaking and as you are sitting, if anybody has visited a pornography site, for example, your phone has been compromised by just accessing a website. And there are bots, software, massive computers that are listening to you right now. Turn on your microphone, possibly your camera. They're monitoring your phone calls, who your friends are what you purchased on Amazon. So on one hand, it has made your life easy. And on the other hand, it has taken away from you your privacy. And if you're an important person with lots of money in the bank and a wallet on your phone, it's taken away your security. This is the way of development. This is the way of technology. And we are entering a new phase of technology that is like nothing that I've experienced in my years, nothing. What did the internet do? It created an entire industry separate from the brick and mortar industries, the Sears, Macy's, the department stores, the massive malls. What has happened to these? Very gradually disappearing. And Amazon is where we go when we want to buy our shoes, the facilities, a garden tool. So that changed. This, the blockchain, the advances in cryptocurrencies will make the internet look like a sleeping dog in comparison. Because what will the blockchain do? It's not going to just change an industry from a brick and mortar to an electronic. It will take society as a whole and turn it upside down. And people who are in power now, in 10 years, will have either shifted their focus into a new world and become part of the masses, or they'll be on the street in San Francisco with a hat and a puppy dog saying, please give me money to feed my dog. And this is the truth. This is not some wild fantasy of an old man's mind, because I know that it's in many of your minds, those who understand both the technology and the impact on our culture, our society, our financial systems, and more importantly, our system of government. Now, when is this going to happen? It's happening now. We have just gone through four months of a massive onslaught. An onslaught. I'm calling it that because we are at war. We in this room, or those of us in this room that are adherents of cryptocurrency, are at war with banks, financial systems, and world governments. If you doubt that, please randomly pick up a, a newspaper or go on to Google and check the news for any day. 
you'll hear Jamie Dimon, the CEO of, of J.P. Morgan, going, Bitcoin is a fraud. Those are his very words. You'll see the Chinese government banning ICOs. In fact, I was speaking, supposed to speak at BitCan in Beijing in December. One week before the speech, China banned ICOs and banned even talking about them. What was my topic? ICOs. The conference was moved to Hong Kong one week before we were supposed to be in Beijing. To everyone's credit, every single speaker assigned to speak in Beijing showed up in Hong Kong. And 80% of the attendees showed up in Hong Kong. When I took the stage, I abandoned my prepared speech and said, please, see who we are. We are refugees. We were, and we still are. So China bans ICOs. Nothing changes. They shut down every exchange in China. Did anything change? Why the Bitcoin went up? In America, the Securities and Exchange Commission has issued 400 subpoenas. I'm one of these. They haven't served me yet. Why? I'm pretty hard to serve. <coughs> 400. 400. And an SEC subpoena is nothing to wag your finger at. I'd be rather served by the FBI for child trafficking or something because the SEC can shut you down, not just economically, put you in prison and ban you from doing business forever in America. So these are serious issues that we're dealing with. And every government on the earth is looking at ways to shut us down. Why is that? It's because we represent the greatest threat to every world government that has ever emerged. And that threat is governments run on money. Where do they get the money? From you and I, the people. And how do they do that? Through a thing called taxation. How much money did you make last year? We're going to take 20% of that. Thank you very much. On down the line. And with that money, they fund their, their junkets, their trips to Spain, their yachts, whatever. How do you collect taxes when we're in a world, and I'm using Monero or a privacy coin, that nobody can trace the origin or the recipient of any transaction? It's impossible. So what happens to the income tax? We then rely on us. We're honest people. Now, the government doesn't have a clue how much money you've made, but you're going to go through and write down every penny and give it to them. Do you honestly believe that that will happen? And do you think our governments honestly believe that that will happen? It is human nature. If we know we cannot be punished by not reporting our full income, or even any income, we will cheat. I'm sorry. You may look at yourself and say, no, no, not me. I'll, I'll put the full amount. But after you spent half of that money already, and you're looking at what's left, I've got to give that to the government, or I'm going to buy another car. What will you choose? <laughs> your, car, your garage is going to be full of cars. So governments know that cryptocurrencies, if they succeed and have widespread or universal acceptance, <laughs> their funding is gone. Who's going to pay the congressman? Air Force One fuel for that massive uh, traveling hotel that the president flies in. It'll be gone. Now, do you think world governments are just going to sit idly by and go, well, let's just see what happens. You know, we have this great meeting. Yeah, it's going to end us all. Well, don't worry about it. We'll see what happens. No. They have a war room now planning on what do we do to shut it down. But they can't. Technologically, it is impossible. When China shut down the exchanges, that's when all the exchanges were centralized. Now, how easy is that? I can go and just pull the plug on the electricity. Exchange over. Or raid the offices. Bomb the building. Whatever. 
piece of cake. But exchanges are coming out now using a thing called atomic swap that require no central server, and they work. So that if you have a wallet with an ato atomic swap capability, you are the exchange. Or you are, if there are one million wallets, you are one millionth of that exchange. And the combination of all of the wallets make the full exchange. And you're in every country in the world, and nobody knows who has the wallets. How do you shut that down? Now, those in government who think this through go, whoa, oh my God, we're lost. But no one listens to those people. Why? No one wants to lose the power that they currently have. You're a senator in America. I mean, you know, my wife yesterday was going through. Do you realize that, that Senator Feinstein is worth $240 million? Before she became a senator, she was worth $30,000. Now, run these numbers, please. If you are a U.S. senator, your power is immense. And there are no U.S. senators that are not worth at least $10 million. So are you going to give up the money, the power, the influence, just because a bunch of radical people with mohawks and, and pierced ears are writing code? No. Yet you cannot win. And we cannot lose. We can't. That doesn't mean it's going to be an easy road. Because even knowing you will win the war, you will have to go through atrocities and pain and suffering and loss. We just went through a four months of it. Now, I, I'm one of those people I will never sell because I know where we're headed. You can push Bitcoin to 50 cents. I don't care. In, in two years, it'll still be half a million dollars. I do not care in the short term, and neither should you. But you must be prepared, not just for market manipulation by those who think they're still in power, and not just threats from the bank to take your credit cards away, which they've done. We'll not let you buy cryptocurrencies with credit cards. Close your accounts that are accepting money from Coinbase. But the actual threat of jail, which I'm facing right now. Fortunately, I've been in so many jails that I'm comfortable in a jail, right? <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry. My wife's not nagging at me to mow the lawn. No, I'm just sitting there, I'll sleep, give me something to read. I get fed three times a day, and it's comfortable. It's a little bit cool, because that, keep, that keeps the, the bacteria down, I understand. But beyond that, it's all right. So no, we are facing a real war. And you're facing real possible hardships. Are you willing to do that? This is a question. The question of whether or not we succeed in the short term or the long term, we will succeed, depends on you. How strong are your convictions? What are you willing to suffer? to take this world as you see it now and transform it into something of extreme beauty. Do you realize how rare an opportunity this is? To transform this world into something that your children and grandchildren will thank you for. Because if you're happy with this world as it is, well, that's fine. You probably never read a newspaper then, or checked Google, or know anything about the reality of this world and what power does to corrupt. Because I'm not happy with this world as it is. I'm not. Anyone who is satisfied with the status quo is already dead inside as I see things. Because who, who runs this world? The rich, the powerful, the people with the guns. Why is America so powerful? It's not because the world loves us. I promise you, it does not. I have traveled this world. And in some places, I am afraid to say I am an American. I'm Canadian. <laughs> Why we are hated universally. 
We are. You're a soldier. You know how the rest of the world sees us. Is this what you want? Is this the world you want to live in? Living in a powerful country because we have bombs that can annihilate hundreds of millions of people. Do we have airplanes that can't be seen by radar or anything else? They can target not just a town, not just a building, but a very room inside a building. Do we have a presidency that sits down on Monday morning and goes, who are we going to kill in the Middle East today? These are our options. We have the drones up and running right now. Tell us which button to push. This is the reality of this world. And you are all paying for it. And me. You are. You have an opportunity to change that. Because what does the blockchain do? It takes the power from those who push the buttons, make the decisions, chooses who lives, who dies, decides how much more you're going to have to work for the government for free so that you can live a normal life. It changes that into something where we are all equal participants. This is not communism. This is not socialism. This is not, you're going to be fine. We'll take care of you. No, you still must work for yourself and be responsible for you. Here, now, today, in this room, you can make the decision to say, yeah, I'm with you. Give me my uniform. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, you desperate to ask a question. Yes, sir. This is nice. I'm sorry? How do you envision a world where governments can't collect taxes? I'm sorry, where governments can't? Governments can't collect taxes. How Okay. All right, now, fortunately, this this gentleman asked, how do you envision a world where governments can't collect taxes? Fortunately, I ran for the presidency under the libertarian banner in 2016. And I got to answer this question a thousand times. Do you realize that when America first was first founded, there was no taxes? Nothing. Why was America founded? We hated taxation. The Boston Tea Party, they're taxing our tea? No, sir. Throw it in the ocean. That was the beginning of this country. For 100 years, there were no taxes. How do they do it? There was a thing called use. Pay for use. What, what would that mean? In today's world, how many people drive on freeways? All of you, yes? Uh, who does not ever drive on a freeway? Okay, now, who created the freeways? Mostly the federal government. We're doing it for free. I get to drive on this nice road and people come out and maintain it two or three times a year and it's smooth. I can almost sleep while I'm driving. Well, why don't you pay for that? Those of you who drive long distances, What do they charge you, 10 cents per mile? You can afford that. 10 cents per mile. Run the numbers, please. We could run this country just off taxing, if you want to call it taxing, paying for what you use, not what I don't use. I paid $40 million one year in taxes in the mid-90s. What did I get for that? Audited. I wasn't using anything, right? Nothing. And so I actually called and said, okay, I've calculated the average wage for the American federal worker. I want to talk to my 800 employees. Where are they, please? No, they're not there. So if I'm using the road, I should pay for the road. If I'm going to a national park and enjoying something that has been preserved for hundreds of years, I should pay for it. That's not taxing you. It's something you choose to pay for. You don't want to pay for the federal highways? Then don't drive on them. Take the back roads. I used to do that. I'm an off-road driver. It's more scenic anyway. So yes, this is how you do it. We don't have to think in that same box that we're living in. How do we want a government without taxes? Pretty damn easy. America did it for 100 years. 
Did that answer your question? Anyone else have, by the way, a pressing question now? Because I may not get to you later. Yes, sir? Let's just make this question time. Yes? I'm sorry, sir. Please come forward. I'm, I'm old and deaf. understand your question. What is the price for what our benefit is? Well, it depends on us. Let me give you an example. The promise of the blockchain and cryptocurrency is a transformation of our world. It has not happened in the way that I would like to see it. ICOs, for example, initial coin offerings. There are some that have been spectacular that I've worked with. Let me give you an example. A coin called outings, outings, O-U-T-I-N-G-S. What did it do? Okay, let's assume, and there's an app that comes with it. Let's assume it's the weekend, I want to take my family on an outing. There are two parts of their app. One, as you wander around town, you go, oh, there's a street musician here, you put this in. Oh my God, there's something else. Are you in a bar, a high class bar? Oh my God, that's Tom Cruise over there. Oh, that's he's Tom Cruise. Now, I'm wandering around, and I go, you know, we went, we went, we saw Madonna last week at a bar. It wasn't very interesting. I would like to see a mime. I love mimes. Now, if everybody had this app, and everybody was actually interacting with it, can you imagine how that would change your world? What do you want to do? Let's go meet a famous movie star today. No, no, I want to see a street musician. So now, you put your input of everything you have seen and everything you want to do. The app goes, okay, well, there's this bunch of options. You, go, you want to see some movie stars? There's Tom Cruise in this place. Da, 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 da. Great. Now, they don't tell you exactly what the place is until you click the button. Then the guy that has that says, yeah, for 50 outings, I'll tell you where it is. Or someone else says, I'll, I'll tell you where it is for 40 or whatever. Or I want to see a street musician. Yeah, there's one over here. For three outings, I'll tell you where it is. Now, it's an economy, is it not? And it's in that economy, your life is enhanced. Because I love street musicians, and in every large city, there's always one or two, but where the fuck are they? I don't know. They change every day, every day. I got some money here last week, but ran out of it going over here now. No. But what happened? The ICO completed. People grabbed those coins and stored them away. Not even interested in what the coin could do for them. Interested in one thing. God damn, it's going to go sky high. It's going to go to the moon. I'm going to cash in and buy a Lambo. No, please God, this is not the proper way to view what we're doing. This is a thing called greed manifesting in the worst possible way. Yeah, yeah, they're coins that triple in value in an hour. Some of them, okay, birds, for example, which I unfortunately promoted, um, not unfortunate. I did. It was, when it was one half a penny, I said, good God, this, this thing is underpriced. It'll probably go up to two pennies. That's a 400% increase. Well, it went up to 11,000%. And then I go, ah, people go, what are you still with Verge? Well, you know, I still think it's worth four cents. And then they trash me. I, was, I said in the very beginning, it's worth four cents. But people go, John Mack, if he recommended it, good God almighty. That's not what this is about. Greed, filling our pockets. I mean, my pockets in my life have been filled too many times, and it buys you nothing except a headache. I had houses all over the world. What did it cost me? Phone calls, 50 a day. Uh, you know, we had uh, uh, the ice destroyed, the uh, whatever, it, you know, the Colorado house. Or your boat in Puerto Rico is sinking. I mean, Christ Almighty, you don't own that shit. It owns you. So do not think that lining your pockets is the purpose of living. It is not. Now, I realize that what I just said is useless. No one will ever take that and actually act on that vice. But if you've been there, maybe you will. <coughs> so no, we have to stop taking this opportunity to change the world 
We have to stop taking that opportunity and change it into changing my life for the better. Buying the stuff that I want. No, 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 no. That's got to stop. To some extent, sure, enrich yourselves, please God. That is one of the reasons that we are here together. But it's not the only reason. We can't enrich ourselves and at the same time build the world that you want to build for your children. Not if the enrichment is 100% of your interests. Because you do have children, most of you, I hope, or some of you, and grandchildren. And if you're a human, a part of your heart, your mind, your entire being is concerned with the welfare and happiness of your offspring. Good God, that's why we have survived as a species. Our mothers and fathers will sacrifice from 18 to 21 years of their life to make sure that you survive and are given the tools and talents so that when you leave home, you have a good chance of thriving. Now, that's part of our DNA. If you allow that part to have any, any access to your intelligent decisions, then you will at some point choose, yeah, yeah, I've got these outing coins. I'm going to store a bunch away. I'm going to take half of them and see if I can have some fucking fun. Please. Because in that having fun and using and relating to and interacting with this new technology, your life will be enriched in ways you never dreamed. Your happiness will be fulfilled in ways that a Lambo can't possibly do. But it's up to you. And it's up to you now. Because really there's no other time if you can't decide now to do something. I promise you, you won't decide tomorrow. You have the opportunity to take what I have said, let it sink in, and then choose. McAfee is full of bullshit. It's okay. Or maybe McAfee has something to say. That's okay, too. Or I wish he'd shut the fuck up because I'm bored and hungry. I don't care. But at least listen for a moment. Not just to me, but to your own hearts, your minds, your entire beings. And I'm going to open it up to questions now, if you have any. You're recommending that effectively we need to express behavioral psychology and code in order to go from an I mindset to a we mindset, right? Well, you know, I don't know about code, okay, or behavior psychology is not my field, my friend. We have to understand what human nature is. Who, we, who, okay, let's start here. Who are we? We're a mixed bag. Everybody here has experienced love at some point because all of you are over the age of 12. Is that true? Anyone not experience love? Yes. You've experienced caring, grace, Happiness, dreams and hopes. And that's a beautiful package. But for every element of this package, you've got another package. Grace and generosity. Greed. Compassion. Jealousy. Love. Fear. Hope. And on and on. What are we? We are hateful. We are greedy. We are jealous. We are angry. We are fearful. That's this page. Over here, we are loving. We are kind. Gracious, embracing. Hopeful. You can't get rid of this side. And you can't live totally in this side. We are a mixed bag. Let's start with there. Now, ask your question again, my friend. And then I'll answer it. So let me, let me rephrase that. We are, as a species, evolving through different stages of... Um, yeah, much better. Psychological yes. evolution. Yeah. We're at a... We're right now at, at, the, at the yes. cusp of going from yes. a high mindset of, yes. mindset of yes. scarcity yes. to a we mindset of yes. a mindset 
Yes. Right? Yes. In order to accelerate that, in order to actually create a digital backbone for this, for this mindset, we need to build, go beyond just the current blockchain yes. technology and build another layer on top of that that is yes. accounting for this um, evolutionary step. Right. And let me phrase this a little differently. We are at, you said that the word, the cusp, any balancing point, where we have a choice for the first time in the evolution of life on this planet, the human intellect can be put into play to determine what our next evolutionary step is. History, well, let's look at history. What is history? History is a series of lies starting with the first written word by the first conqueror of the first subjected civilization. Because history is written by whom? The conquerors. Now, sometimes history is obliterated by the conquerors. The Spanish, when they came to the north uh, eastern coast of Mexico, they met the Mayan civilization and found hundreds of thousands of written works of beautiful art. What did they do to cherish that, to preserve it? They burned all but four books. Why? They were ungodly, unchristian, diabolical. What if the blockchain were there and the minds were, were part of it? And they go, uh, God, man, the Spanishers came in and burnt this book, and this book was da 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 da. History becomes inviolate. Please, God, see the power of this. That if history, and it will at some point, will apply the blockchain to the constant growth of human development, which is history, and there will be no more lies. Because consensus says, I'm sorry, that just did not happen. I mean, even today, people are looking back at World War II, for people who actually believe that maybe the Jewish people were not annihilated in Germany. I, I mean, it's a question. If the blockchain were here, there'd be no questions. Well, yeah, go back here to block number 11773345. You can see right how. To that effect, do you realize that when the blockchain is applied to every aspect of our life, that human deception will disappear? Lies cannot exist in a technological system where every act has a consensus, has an observer, an actor, an interplay. So that when you call home and say, you know, I am working late, you know, your wife doesn't have to say, I don't, you know, uh, no, you left the office with so-and-so and you checked into this hotel and you're now in bed with her. When you get home, you have to have a long talk with me. In fact, you may not want to come home. You may laugh or smile or just shrugged it off. But believe me, God, this is happening. This is the power of what's happening. Now, how we implement this, because I do not want a world where my every act is written in an immutable ledger. I still believe in privacy. But if you do not think of it now and make your choices appropriately, there will be some smart motherfucker it will end up being the world dictator, and he will implement that system. Because the blockchain gives the vision that George Orwell wrote about in 1984. It gives that potential power to anyone willing to take it. So we can't let that person do that. We cannot let that person take that, because the blockchain has taken that centralized power and distributed it to you. For God's sake, don't give it back. Another, any other questions? Am I running over? You are, but you're good. What? You are, but you're good. I don't think you have the power to say I'm good here. They're actually organizers. <laughs> um, this gentleman raised his hand first. Yes, sir. Uh, thanks, John. Uh, two questions. Um, do you think we as a society are ready for the Internet of Truth in the way we <laughs> No, sir. But it does not matter. It does not matter. When, when, when Barack Obama ran for the president... Can, can I just give you the other question quickly? Okay, yes. How do we solve the banking roadblocks as an industry? Oh, my God, sir. Uh, was I supposed to talk about that? 
Over. That's, why don't you come to me afterwards? It's a long question, a long question. But the bigger question is, are we ready for it? We're never ready for it. When Barack Obama was running for president, I remember speaking to a very wise senator, state senator, from Wisconsin. He said, America is just not ready for a black president. I said, you're absolutely right, but you'd better get your ass ready because he's coming. <laughs> That's what we are as people. We are never ready for the inevitable. Beginning with our birth and absolutely certain death. How many people are ready for that absolutely certainty? Very few, but it's coming. Whether you're ready or not, it's coming. Life is coming in its fashion, ready or not. Get used to that. Anybody else? No, oh, wait. Uh, I'm sorry, this gentleman had a question. Uh, uh, yes, sir. What do you visualize with security back tokens? So, right, the, the theory that. Currently, utility tokens are not backed by any asset. And then now there's a new trend of uh, asset backed tokens. What's your thoughts there? Okay. You want the truth? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> like I said, you're not ready for it, but here it comes. Okay. Asset-backed tokens are a scheme, please see this, by the powers that be to prevent us from separating from those things that they call valuable assets like gold. Please, God, do you see that we're walking backwards? Why do you have to have a token backed by an asset? Because number one, it doesn't work. Try to get your money. There. If you give me that percentage of the assets, no, you're not going to get it. Anything with value, permanent value, is backed by your belief and commitment and nothing else. What is the asset that values a marriage? Is gold behind it? Rolls Royce? $10 bill? Divorce settlement? No. The asset is your acceptance of that system of one man, one woman, we're going to have a bunch of children. Why is, where is the value there? The value is in the fact that your children will have stability. They wake up tomorrow and have the same mother and father, hopefully. Now, we know that doesn't work all the time, but that is the intent. That is the value of marriage. And you accept that value because you will sacrifice 21 years of your life for these squealing, squabbly things that you'll be happy to get rid of in 21 years. But you do it. It's for these things that marriage exists. Not for you. Not for the fact that your wife's not going to sleep around or your husband's not going to sleep around because it's going to happen. No. For the children. That your commitment to stay together and be a mother and a father until your children leave the nest and you say, thank God, goodbye, and you're gone. So no, this concept of backing a token or anything with a value that has been created by the system of monolithic power is not the way to go. That's not it. And I'm sorry that if it... Yes, go here. Yes, first man is Quick question just about I'm sorry? Yeah, thank you. The top five banks are actually going to be launching. So what, uh, what technologies or what applications do you think that uh, are going to be widely adopted by those those banks and uh, widely accepted by the general? Yeah, for uh, I, banks or top five banks who are actually putting quite a bit of money into blockchain itself yeah. as an application. Uh, what technologies, what applications do you think are going to be widely um, right now, we're at the, at the point of, of ad, 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 adoption of the blockchain that anything that happens, we're like, whoa, this is the application. No, the blockchain will be applied to everything. Secure, it's a perfect security solution. The problem with current being having is we don't know who's coming in. We can't guarantee that this person is allowed and should be coming into our system. And accuracy is going to any number of doors. The blockchain is going to be here. I've gone through the blockchain here. A few seconds out. The blockchain is being applied to one of the greatest problems of retail the supply chain. Imagine Walmart 
selling a soap every time. They actually own the plantations, or they work with plantations and build, uh, they, have, they grow the, the fiber, they process the fiber differently, that weave the fiber, that transport the fiber, that create the ashy circle, and then ship it to a long center in Pocatel, Ohio. Do you realize that the opportunity for fraud, self gain, lying, in the supply chain, it's where most of the money leaks out. You buy the blockchain, and everybody in the supply, everybody. The one guy in the price of pain, it arrived. No way, we all saw it arrive. It arrived at 2 15 yesterday afternoon, and you saw it. And we all know that. Including the guy who's next to life to get what you should have bought yesterday. It's perfect. There will be no application, no utility, nothing. This must be applied to which is why this is the opportunity to sit down and accept. It's not that I don't understand. It's not complicated. Accept what it will or can do, and then you must do your part to make sure that we apply it to some way that a big territory can control us and our children and grandchildren forever. And in a way that enhances your life and the life of your offspring. The understanding of nuclear physics will not have to be applied to the building of weapons that will annihilate the entire civilization. We have to you have a choice now. Everybody in this room. Look into your own eyes. And I'm sorry about that.